proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, A Hole in the Ground. Proudly we hail the rugged individuals of the United States Infantry, an outfit that has established themselves even with the advent of new and superior weapons as the backbone of the entire U.S. Army. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, here's an important message that concerns all the young men and young women of America. If you know radios, telephones, motors, or if you're experienced in any other technical skills, you are needed in the United States Army. Your expert knowledge and know-how is just as essential to the Army as is the man with the gun. You'll be an important member of the team. For the high school graduate thinking about a future career, this is a must. You can begin immediately training for a highly skilled position and a vigorous, active life. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. They'll help you to decide where you're needed most. You'll be proud of your part in assuring the future security of our country. If you're interested in more information, see your Army recruiter today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, A Hole in the Ground. The rifle company dug in at the forward slope of the hill. It was the key position for the battalion. The battalion was protecting the flank for an entire division. If the company gave way, the battalion would be overrun, and the division would be cut off. The rifle company commander, a combat-wise veteran, anxiously checked the disposition of his men. He personally verified the position of each foxhole. He had a platoon of heavy machine guns from the weapons company, and he made sure that each gun was dug in where it could deliver the most effective fire. Under cover of darkness, he walked his entire company front. He made sure of every man, every single piece of equipment. And then, and only then that he retired to his command post, where his first sergeant was waiting with a welcome cup of steaming hot coffee. Why don't you turn in, sir? I don't know what's the matter with me, Cummings. I think I've got the jitters. I don't know why, sir. The position's solid. Yeah, I guess so. Any more sugar? Yeah, right here, sir. Yeah, first platoon can make mincemeat out of anybody who tries us from the front. Second platoon gives us a solid left flank. We got the river on our right. Yeah, I know, I know. Still, I... Those four machine gunners from H Company. Ha, I seen where you put them. They each got at least 300 yards of grazing fire. I wish I could tell you what's the matter with me, Sergeant. But I just have a mean hunch that... Captain, you know, if anybody was to sit down and draw a map of the, uh... Well, of the ideal disposition of a rifle company in defense, this would be it. You know, Captain, all my life I only used the word beautiful to describe dames. But I'll use it here to describe our position. What are they up to? Why is it so quiet out there? Ah, Captain, I never worry when it's quiet. Uh, I guess you're right. Who fired? And after me, lecturing these guys about being trigger happy. Outside, quick. Halt! Give the password. That's Corporal Stevens. Corporal! Captain Sears, Captain. And what is it? Sir, I saw some men moving through the first platoon front. Sergeant, you Stevens stand guard here. I'll get Lieutenant Wilson on the phone. Why isn't he trying to get me? Frankenstein 1, calling Frankenstein 7. What's going on out there? Well, come in, come in. Sergeant, yes. hey, come in. I can't raise first platoon. Yeah, Captain Sears, that fire in it's, it's to the rear. We've been infiltrated. They got a warm battalion. Furnace White, Furnace White. This is Frankenstein. Fra Sergeant, I can't get battalion either. You bet your life you can't get battalion. The wires are out. Jackson! Captain... We'll have to surrender. That's right, Captain. The position is hopeless. Jackson, how did you get here? And you're going to surrender to me. Jackson, you... Ah, 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 Sears. 
After all, it's only a war game, and you know the rules. You're licked, friend. I got my men in back of your first and second platoon, so they're out of action. I got a mortar section in the rear of your third platoon ready to make hamburgers out of them. So our guys win this round, kid. I wouldn't be surprised if this lets us win the whole war. No, I won't. <laughs> Sergeant, this is Captain Jackson. Where is prisoners? Oh, is that coffee, Sergeant? Uh, spoils of war, you know. Join me, Sears? One lump or two, Captain Jackson. Three, Sergeant. Sir. Huh? General Dawson's outside. Uh-oh, the boss. Hey, Sears, maybe I'll visit you in our PW compound tonight. How would you I... like to go jump in the lake? Oh, no, that's no way to talk to a conqueror. Gordon, escort these men to the stockade. Yes, sir. Captain Jackson reporting, sir. Captain, I want you to know the whole Blue Army's on the run. I also want you to know it's due to your maneuver. Uh, tell me, man, how in the world did you ever get your company over to this side of the mountain? Well, sir, It's I... unbelievable. Here I was, ready to order a general withdrawal. And without warning, I find out we've smashed through their flank. Oh, well, sir, General is, Dawson. Uh... All right, here. Hey, general. How about you, Colonel? Down by the riverbank, the Blue Army commander and his staff. <laughs> They've been captured. Oh, ho, ho. Harry himself, eh? Oh. Oh, what a difference from the war game last year. Well, what can he do? Under the rules, they don't have a ghost of a chance. Gentlemen, the enemy invasion of Bavaria is stopped dead in its tracks. Thanks to you, Captain Jackson. Thank you, sir. Jackson, I want you to write a detailed report. I want to know how you happen to think of this enveloping maneuver, how you were able to use the terrain. I want it all on paper by tomorrow. Uh, yes, sir. You lucky stiff. What? Hey, aren't you in the stockade yet? Oh, you just heard the war's over. Jackson, how did you do this to me? I could have sworn we were solid as the rock of Gibraltar. Hey, Sears, you got a typewriter in your quarters. Why? Well, the general wants me to write a report. I'm not much at building things up, so give an old buddy a hand. Huh? Help me write it. Where do you get your nerve? Hmm? On account of me, my side loses the war. And I'm supposed to write a report that builds you up as a big hero. Yeah, except I'm not the hero. The real hero is a guy by the name of Otto Hoff. Never heard of him. Look, I, I wouldn't know where or how to begin a thing like this. You used to write stories for magazines. Well, I could tell you a story that'll knock your eye out. Now, who's this Otto Hoffman? Well, he's the guy who beat you tonight. Huh? Yeah. Come on, you want to know why you lost, don't you? Well... Ah, that's my buddy. Come on, let's get to your typewriter, huh? What a report the general's going to get. <laughs> Hoffman, uh, at one or two Fs. Two, two. Now, let's see, where should I start? Listen carefully. Hmm? You start at the beginning. When you come to the end, stop. Oh, okay. Let's see, it was back in 1943, yeah. I was a platoon sergeant in the 42nd Division. We were in Oklahoma. Uh, one day, we got a couple of new replacements. You don't need the word new. Hmm? Ever hear of an old replacement? Oh, well, that's where you come in, kid. Make this report sing, huh? You know what I mean? What does Oklahoma, USA in 1943 have to do with a war game and Germany in 1953? Now, don't whip me, boy. I'm an old war horse. I run only when I feel like it. But so anyway, one of them is a skinny kid called Otto Hoffman. Now, what can I tell you about Otto? Well, to begin with, Otto don't talk. He's got two left feet. He picks up a rifle like it's a rattlesnake, and he's scared of his own shadow. You yell at him and you feel like a hound because his eyes look like he's going to bust into tears any minute. Well, anyway, I don't know what to do about Otto, see? I know I can't make a soldier out of him, and I tell it to the old man, and he agrees with me. But we're stuck with What can we do? Hey, what has all this got to do with Well, your... anyhow, one night, I'm in Tulsa on a weekend pass. Well, you get to the point of the story. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Now, I'm in a restaurant, and there sitting at the next table is my boy Otto with the most beautiful-looking dame I ever saw. Thinks I, Otto, has been holding out on his buddy. Look, you think General Dawson's going to be interested General in... Dawson is going to be fascinated. No. Well, anyhow, I wave at Otto, see? He whispers something to the dame, and the first thing I know, she gets up from the table. He tries to stop her, but she walks away from him and comes over to my table and sits down. Now, was that nice of you? You stole his girl. His girl? It was his mother. Mother? Yeah. I'll never forget it. And that's why you lost the war tonight, just because his mother came over to talk to me. Oh, she was a great woman. son speaks of you very much in his letters, Sergeant Jackson. Oh, I can imagine what he says. He is quite fond of you. Uh, tell me, please, does he do what is required of him? Well, sure, yeah. I can tell by the way you said that he, he is not a good soldier, then. 
Well, he, he tries. You, you must understand, Sergeant. We, the, the Hoffmans, are an old family. He is the first of us to be a soldier. Back in the old country, in, in Germany, we were writers, artists, teachers, but no soldiers. Otto, he insisted he must join the army, and I couldn't... Otto wanted to join the army? Oh, yes. Since we have come to this country, it has been so wonderful for us here. You, you have been born here, you would not know. It is not like this everywhere. You see, we were wealthy. We had an estate in Bavaria. My husband was a professor. But he would not teach the way they told him. One night the SS came. We never saw him again. I'm sorry. We were able, Otto and I, to come to America. And when the war came, Otto felt he must join the army to pay his debt to this country, which has been so good to us. Yeah, well, don't worry about Otto. He'll work out. He, he is a sensitive boy, not strong. And he feels that he does not speak English too well. The, the thought of killing him, it is against his nature, and yet he feels he must fight for his new country. Yeah. Well, everybody likes Otto. That is, they would if he'd loosen up and give him a chance, you know. I do not know if this is proper, Sergeant, but would you try to help him? Make him feel that he is a success as a soldier. Sure. It means so much to him to be a good soldier. For crying out loud. Otto. Hey, Otto, you okay? How do you like that? He's off like a light. Smitty, get a medic. Hoffman. Hoffman. What's the matter with this man, Sergeant? Doesn't he know the inspecting officer always pushes a gun back? What did he try to do? Catch a rifle with his chin? This is the first yeah, time well, he'll I Yeah, well, he'll be all right, sir. I, I'm personally going to take him in hand. I'll make a soldier of that. Oh, no, Sergeant Jackson. No, I'm afraid not. We're soldiers, not... Miracle workers. But, sir, I, uh, I, I can still try. Yeah. I suppose you can. Now, Otto, this is a rifle. We call it the Garand, also the M1. Not to load. It is held in the left hand. Thus. Now, the clip is fed in with the right. Care being taken to hold the thumb clear so that the bolt does not take off a piece of it as it shoots forward. Have we got that? All right. Load. Oh, oh what do I told you? Now, Otto, while it is true that modern man has enlisted the aid of science in providing him with weapons of war, there are times when the old ways are best. Which brings us to the bayonet. Now, the bayonet is attached so. Now, what we have to learn is how to maneuver when an enemy soldier comes at you looking like this. Hey! Uh, Otto! Uh, Otto! Oh, somebody get a medic with some smelling salts. Sergeant, you have been very patient with me, and, and I try. I can understand perfectly everything you say. But when I try to do it, I, I don't know, I, I get so nervous. Yeah, well, you just keep plugging away, Otto. We'll get somewhere, I hope. Sergeant? Uh, yes, sir. All leaves, furloughs, passes. Cancelled. We've been alerted. For real this time, sir? Yes, you can bet on this one. New equipment, new weapons, whole gang of tests for qualification. Oh, this is the old ball game, all right. They'll be meeting a platoon leaders and sergeants in the orderly room in 20 minutes. Yes, sir. Poor Otto. What'd you say, Jackson? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, it's funny, sir. I, I often wondered how I'd feel when I'd be told I was going overseas. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I often wondered just what I'd say. So I guess all I could think of was poor Otto. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, A Hole in the Ground. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. 
Young man, if you want to be the sort of man that others look up to, you'll get there fast if you can qualify to join the Army. You'll see it change from the very moment you put on the uniform of a United States soldier. You'll not only stand straighter and taller, you'll walk with the sure tread of a man who knows where he's going. Your training in the Army will give you the confidence of a man with an important job to do. You have to pass the mental and physical examinations in order to get in this oldest military service in our country. But once you're in, you're on the way up. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. There's a recruiter there who'll be very glad to tell you all about what's in it for you when you join the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of A Hole in the Ground. Well, if you've ever gone overseas, you know what a hassle it is. The whole outfit gets run through physicals and weapons tests. Every 15 minutes, there's one kind of inspection or another. One day, you're crawling along the infiltration course, and then you're on the rifle range, and then you're making speed marches with full field pay. And every hour on the hour, there's a new rumor, a new change. Well, what can I tell you? Anyway, finally, we get squared away. Otto, too. We got on trains and left for the port. Well, Otto lost his duffel bag. Don't ask me how. We got loaded up on the boat, and 15 minutes out to sea, Otto got seasick. Uh, but to be fair about it, he had plenty of company. And then one fine day, we're in France. Follows a fantastic round of activity at a place called Delta Bay Staging Area. More new equipment, more new weapons. But this time, something really new has been added. Live ammunition. We're going to get into this thing no fooling now. <laughs> you know, one rainy day, oh, there's a law that says any time the army moves up, it has to rain. Well, anyway, one rainy day comes an order, and we pile into jeeps and trucks, and we head north. We pass through towns and villages filled with people going about their business. MPs are waving us on. And then we come to a forest. The order is dismount. We walk up a bit, and... Here's the war. Patton Jackson. Yes, sir. We need a reconnaissance patrol. First platoon supplied it yesterday. It's your turn. How many men? I oh, hope I should do it. I'll tell you what you have to find out. First... <laughs> Well, I walked back from the command post. I knew I was going to lead the patrol, so I had to pick four men. Let's see, Webster, Cheskin, Matson, and Yates. Uh, no, not Yates. He went last time. Now, who hasn't gone out yet? E, Otto. How can I take Otto out on a patrol? Can you imagine Otto on a patrol? Okay, Webster, you, Cheskin, Matson, Yates, we'll take off as soon as it gets dark. Sergeant. And what is it, Otto? Sergeant. Yates went with you the other day. So? So? <laughs> I did not. Look, I pick out the patrols here. But, but it is not fair. Oh. Oh, say, that reminds me, Otto. I've got to send a man back to the company as a KP. But you should send back a man who can use a rest. And Yates has a cold. Otto, get going, will you? Now quit bothering me. But I must bother you, Sergeant. I'm the same as anyone else here. I must go on patrol if it is my turn. Otto, back to the kitchen and that's an order. Sergeant. What will happen to me if I disobey the order? Look, Sergeant, you've been good to me, but you're wrong. You cannot protect me forever. I want to be a good soldier. You must give me a chance. Well, the wind-up was he went on the patrol. The idea was for us to get a prisoner. I didn't see how we were going to get past their lines. Their foxholes were everywhere. We'd be sure to get spotted. So what were we going to do? Well, who comes up with the bright idea of all people? Otto. Sergeant, if a German were to sneak up close to our lines and talk to us in English as though he were an American, would you be fooled? Well, he'd have to speak real good or his accent would get spotted. So what are you trying to do? Sergeant, I speak German. I mean, the way a German speaks it. I have a Bavarian accent. I have a plan. Listen. Hilfe! Hilfe! Kameraden! Hilfe! Otto, will somebody come out? Would not you come out if you heard a wounded buddy call for help? Okay, pour it on, Otto. Sarge, I 
hear somebody crawling. Hilfe! Hilfe! Was jetzt? Wo bist du? Mein Fuß. Hier, Kamerade, hier. Ja. Komm, komm her, Kamerade. Komm her. Ja, ich komm. Ja, no. Now, first, no. No. Ja, ja. So, thanks to Otto, we got us a prisoner. I guess that was the night Otto really became a member of the outfit. Well, the war kept going and we kept moving. The enemy was on the run, but he was putting up a whale of a battle. And in his own quiet way, Otto was quite a soldier. It got to be that whenever you needed somebody to do something, it was always, get Otto. And Otto loved it. You know, there were times when Otto surprised me. Here they come. All right, call back to the mortars. Get us some fire on coordinates 18, 19, and 20. Breckenridge. Hey, Breckenridge. Give us some... Hey, what's the matter with those meatheads, Sarge? I can't raise oh, them. The lines are probably cut. Somebody's got to run back. That's me, Sergeant. Uh, what? Hey, wait a minute, Otto. Get the dirt. Look, we've got to knock out that machine gunner or we'll be pinned down here all night. Sergeant, huh? if I can crawl over to that little rise, I can get him with a rifle grenade. If you try to crawl over to that little rise, you won't get five feet. Let's find out. Hey, I, Otto! Are you come back here! Otto! We barreled across France. We cut through Alsace-Lorraine and then we began the real invasion of Germany. We were on the southern flank of the army, and our outfit soon reached the province of Bavaria. To me, and to everyone else in the company, it was just Germany. But to Otto... I wonder why they paved this road. What's that, Otto? This road. I, I remember. It used to be so narrow. Uh, you ever been here before, Otto? This road, it, it goes up the hill past my father's summer cottage. <laughs> I was born here. Why? We used to come here every summer. Oh, we would swim in the river. No, I had a boat. I used to play pirate. Hold it. You know, I can't believe there's nothing between here and Munich. Everybody pull over to the side. Hanley, take two men and reconnoiter up front. Go, man. Slim, let's go. Yeah. We used to have a pirate cave. I, I discovered it. I wonder if it's still there. There's something up front. They dug it at the base of the hill. How many? I don't know. A lot of them. Oh, this is great. They're blowing in 88s, and we're right out here in the open. What are we going to do? That barrage is cutting us off from the rear. I will have to dig in and take it. Sergeant. Sergeant, follow me. Where are you going? I wonder if it's still there. If what's still there? My cave. My pirate cave. What are you talking about? We cannot stay here. Let me lead the way. <laughs> There were some overhanging bluffs on the riverbank. We raced through the heavy barrage to a clump of trees that for the time cut us off from the sight of the enemy. The ground was rocky and strewn with great massive boulders. Otto stopped and looked at one of the tremendous rocks. There was a little ditch around it. He jumped down into the ditch and let out a yell. The tunnel! There's the tunnel! Come on! We had no place to go, so we followed him. It was a tunnel, all right, through solid rock. It twisted and turned, and it was dark and damp, but big enough for us to crawl through. We must have crawled for hours. Finally, we saw daylight. There was a sort of entrance with a big tree growing through the opening. A tree that hid the opening from view. Sergeant, up ahead. We're on the other side of the river. We're in the back of them. That's true. We were in back of them. I looked out through the opening. There was a command post, and straight on down the hill, we looked at the backs of enemy soldiers dug into their foxholes. Well, we stayed there and waited until dark. And then we went to work. <laughs> Lucky, lucky stiff. Mm. He had a hometown boy on your side. He knew about that tunnel. Yeah, yeah, he did. And you know, I never forgot it either. So now, eight years later, I find myself on maneuvers in the same territory. Man, oh man, talk about luck. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm looking for Captain Jackson. They said he would... Captain 
Jackson. Jackson. Hey, it's so good to see you. Otto, you old son of a gun. You're a sight for sore eyes. Oh, oh by the way, this is my friend, Captain Sears. Good evening, Major. I, I, I thought I'd look you up on my leave. I found out your outfit was on maneuvers. Well, uh, maneuvers ended. We won, Otto. Well, <laughs> you should know this territory like a book. I remember we fought here. Oh, the lucky stiff. He used that tunnel again. No. <laughs> you remember. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask him what happened to you, but uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, they pulled Otto right out of the line that day and gave him a battlefield commission. Well, look at him. Today, he outranks me. And when I first met him, he didn't know a rifle from a hole in the ground. Well, don't knock that hole in the ground, fellas. It was the making of both of you. <laughs> America's finest men re-enlist in the United States Army. Take advantage now of the U.S. Army's career guidance program that gives you planned advancement. Men with prior Army service may now enlist directly for the infantry, field artillery, armor, Corps of Engineers, or the anti-aircraft artillery. You can go up fast in one of these crack action teams. You'll get well-planned schooling to speed you on your way, and promotions will depend on your skill and all-around efficiency. Moreover, if you've been out less than two years, you may be eligible to re-enlist in an attractive grade. Check with your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiter for full career details. He'll advise you on the many personal and financial benefits of service when you re-enlist in any branch of our modern army. Remember, if you're a veteran of the United States Army, you can choose your branch of service when you re-enlist. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>